Hi, I'm Ellen Renee Adams, President of the Jewish Community Federation of Richmond, and welcome to our community Passover Seder. Passover means to pass over every challenge, and we are definitely being challenged right now. The world as we know it is turned upside down. But tonight, we're going to tell our Jewish story, our story from slavery to freedom. And though we're separated from our family and our friends, and we're not getting to do our regular Seder traditions, we're still coming together as a community to celebrate this holiday of faith and freedom. We're glad you could be with us. We welcome you to our table. Chag Sameach. Hi, everybody. This is Robin Farzad. I host the show Full Disclosure on NPR member station VPM News. I am so uh, happy, considering the circumstances, to be with you here tonight to celebrate what we at VPM and at the Jewish Federation of Richmond are calling uh, virtual Seder, um, clearly extenuating circumstances this year. Uh, as recently as a, you know, a week or two ago, we all expected to be with our extended families for the traditional Passover Seder. Um, but this pandemic has clearly uh, locked down so many cities and has a self-quarantining from loved ones, even in the same city. And that's a situation that uh, we find ourselves in. And in my house, we always like to get together with uh, my in-laws and uh, my children's cousin and whatnot. And uh, we're all in the the social distancing phase right now. But like everything else that's happening with school and work, we're really trying to make the best of it and underscore um, the importance of community and creative solutions. And so you'll forgive um, the cobbled nature, the cobbled together nature of this virtual Seder. But uh, I believe it's also a beautiful thing in that we're telling a, a story of struggle and perseverance and uh, deliverance to a sort of a promised land. So thank you so much. Uh, this is a presentation uh, jointly of, uh, of the Jewish community of Richmond through the Jewish Federation, uh, uh, jointly with VPM, uh, using the power of media to educate, entertain, and inspire. It is your very proud uh, local PBS and NPR affiliate. And we're doing this as a service to the community. Um, you're gonna see many other families chip in with stories and anecdotes and excerpts of their uh, from their Seder, and I will be using our family Haggadah. This is the uh, Passover playbook, if you will, uh, just to introduce you to the concept of Passover for those outsiders, uh, the non-Jewish people or the secular audience out there that maybe got tired of uh, uh, Netflix and Tiger King and whatnot and want to tune into uh, the riveting stuff on vpm.org. Uh, welcome to our Seder. Uh, Passover and the Seder together recount the story of our deliverance from Egypt, the Jews' deliverance of Egypt. It's the same story that Jewish people have told for over 3,000 years. Before the start of every Sabbath or Jewish holiday, it is traditional for the women of the household or any individual to light two candles in honor of the holiness of the day. Baruch Atah Adonai, Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Asher Kedeshanu B'mitzvotav, V'tzivanu L'havlik Ner Shel Yom Tov. Blessed art thou, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who has commanded us to kindle the Passover lights. We now sanctify the day, or express how special this day is, with Kaddish. We hold a cup of wine in our right hand, recite the blessing over the wine, which is as much a blessing over the fruit of the vine as it is about the sweetness of life. We express our thanks for the gift of festivals, for joy and holidays, for happiness, among them this day of Passover, the festival of our liberation, a day of sacred assembly, recalling the exodus from Egypt. We then follow that blessing with the Sheikh Yanu, which is about thanks for us being sustained by all that life has given us and for having reached this season. Sabri, Marnan Rabban Arbasai, Baruch Atadanai, Eloheinu Melech Olam, Borei Peri Hagafen. Baruch Atadanai, Eloheinu Melech Olam, Asher Baruch Aban Mikolam, Roman Mikolashon, Vikidishon of Mitzvah Batitim Lanu Adnail Hirubi Ahava Odim Simcha 
Kagimus Ben Sasson, as Yom, Kagamatso says, Zaman Cheruseno, Mikrakoda Zecher, as yes, Miss Rayim, Kivan Vacharta, the Osanakidashta, Mikol Hamim, Moade Kalchacha, the Simcha, the Sasson in Kaltano, Baruchata Denai, Mikidesh Israel, the Hasmanim. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech olam Shehechianu v'kiyimanu v'higiyanu l'azman hazeh For many families, now is the time we would ritually wash our hands as we would before any meal. This section of the Seder is called Urchatz. We pour water from a cup once in each hand over a sink or basin. We do not say a blessing with this hand washing, but we do it in preparation to eat the parsley. Dipped in salt water, which this year is a particularly good idea. <laughs> Wash your hands. Hi, my name is Claudia Sachs. I'm Roberta Oster Sachs, and we are here to talk about dipping parsley in salt water and to wish you a happy Pesach. We'll now be dipping our parsley or another green vegetable in salt water. And then we'll eat the parsley or karpas, which symbolizes the humble origins of the Jewish people and the rebirth of spring as we look outside on this beautiful April day. In Eastern Europe, where green vegetables were not common, the potato was used instead. And the salt water symbolizes the tears that our ancestors shed during slavery. Before eating the vegetable, we recite the following blessing. Blessed, Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who creates the fruit of the earth. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, borei pri ha'adama. Happy Pesach. This next section of the Seder is very important. Yachatz is when we break the middle matzah on our plate. This is how we get something called the afikomen, which plays another very important part of our Seder for the children. This is the part of the Seder called yachatz, or breaking of the middle matzah. Lucas is going to take the middle matzah out of the matzah cover and break it in half. He's going to give one half to his middle brother, Caleb, who's going to put it back into the matzah cover. Lucas is going to give the other piece of matzah to his eldest brother, Noah, who's going to put it into the afikomen cover. It's traditional in our home to hide the afikomen now for the children to find it after the meal is eaten. Once the children have found it, or whoever finds it, usually gets a prize. This section of the Seder, Magid, is really the central part of what we are here to do tonight. And for this section, we have many from our community to help us out. Shalom, and welcome to the next installment of our video series on how to make a meaningful and joyous Seder this year, however you are celebrating. And we come now to what is really the heart of the Passover Seder, the section known as Magid. Magid means telling. Uh, and it's the heart of the Seder because the essence of what we're called to do at the Seder uh, is to retell the story of the Exodus from Egypt. Now, many of us might have memories from family Seders, our own Seders, uh, of you know that Seder leader who insisted, or member, uh, a participant at the Seder who insisted uh, that we read every single word of the Haggadah, uh, and Magid is the uh, largest by a long shot section of the Haggadah. Uh, and so someone that uh, believes that you have to read every single word or you haven't fulfilled your obligation uh, and, uh, and that you, know, you might speed read it in Hebrew, you might read it in English, it, whether it's meaningful, whether it's relevant, it doesn't really matter as long as you get through all the words. And I'm here to tell you that that is categorically not true. The point of Magid is exactly what the name suggests. Magid, tell the story, tell the story. Tell it to your children who might be present. Tell it to your parents who might be present. Tell it to your friends who might be present, even if virtually. Um, tell it to yourself if you're having your own Seder. And in fact, Jewish law uh, even has a passage that says uh, that if you are observing the Seder for yourself, you ask yourself uh, about the uniqueness of the night of Passover and uh, questions related to the Exodus, and you tell yourself the story. So the essence of what we do at Magid is 
to tell the story. So if that means you read all of the uh, traditional words in the Haggadah in this section, great. If it means that you skip around and just select portions, and reflect on their meaning and their relevance and use them um, as conversation prompts, great. If you don't recite any of the traditional words of the Haggadah and just talk about and retell and think about, study, investigate, turn over the story of the Exodus to mine it for, uh, for, for personal meaning um, and for uh, social and, uh, and spiritual transformation, um, that's great too. Even if you don't read any of the words of the Haggadah, if you tell the story, um, you have fulfilled your obligation. The words of the Haggadah are really just uh, that. They are supposed to be prompts for deeper study and reflection and conversation at the Seder. So use them that way um, and feel free also not to use them. The point is telling the story. The Haggadah gives multiple opportunities and ways of entering into the story uh, for different kinds of participants, for different learning styles, uh, and uh, for different backgrounds, uh, and for different interests. Um, so see them that way. See them as avenues and opportunities, but not as expectations. The essence is telling the story. Before asking the very famous four questions, we begin to tell this important story of our liberation from Egypt. We recite, there arose in Egypt a Pharaoh who knew not of the good deeds that Joseph had done for that country. Thus he enslaved the Jews and made their lives harsh through servitude and humiliation. This is the basis for the Passover holiday, which we commemorate with these different rituals tonight. Now we come to the four questions. When we often have the youngest child at the table, or really any individual recite in Hebrew the response to the basic question, why is this night different from all other nights? In English, the questions are, on all other nights, we eat either bread or matzah. On this night, why only matzah? On all other nights, we eat herbs or vegetables of any kind. On this night, why bitter herbs? On all other nights, we do not dip even once. On this night, why do we dip twice? On all other nights, we eat meals in any manner. On this night, why do we sit around the table together in a reclining position? Since this is such a central part of our night and such an amazing moment for our children, we wanted to bring multiple families into your homes for the traditional Hebrew. Cool.
Wenn wir stehen über den Mr. Wien, wenn wir stehen über den Mr. Wien, Hawaii war es der, Hawaii war es der, cool on the Mr. Wien. Hawaii war es der, Hawaii war es der, cool on the Mr. Wien. The rest of the participants at the Seder then answer the children. We were slaves to Pharaoh in Egypt, and God brought us out with a strong hand and an outstretched arm. And if God had not brought out our ancestors out of Egypt, we and our children and our children's children would still be subjugated to Pharaoh in Egypt. Even if we were all old and wise and learned in Torah, we would still be commanded to tell the story of the Exodus from Egypt. And the more we talk about the Exodus from Egypt, the more praiseworthy we are. We now come to the story of the four children. The Torah describes four children who ask questions about the Exodus story. Tradition teaches that these verses refer to four different types of children. The wise child, the wicked child, the simple child, and the child who does not even know how to ask. Great. Right, on Passover, we read the story of the four sons in the Haggadah. The four sons are the wise son, the wicked son, the simple one, and the one that does not know how to ask. The wise son, he'll say, what are the testimonies, the statutes, the laws, which our Lord our God has commanded us? You in turn shall instruct him on the laws of Pesach. The wicked one will say, what is the service to you? He says to you, but not to him. He thus excludes himself from the community. He has, he has denied the foundations of our faith. You therefore must say to him, it is because of the, this that the Lord did for me when I left Egypt. For me, but not for him. The simple son will say, What is this? Thus you shall say to him, With a strong hand the Lord took us out of Egypt from the house of bondage. As for the one who does not know how to ask, you must initiate him. As it is said, You shall tell your child on this day, saying, It is because of this that the Lord did for me as I left Egypt. As with many parts of our Seder, we often add modern twists or interpretations to our experience. Great. So on Passover, we read the story of the four sons. There's the wise son, the wicked son, the simple son, and the son that doesn't know enough to ask a question. But there's also a story of the, of the four parents, and that's the story I'm going to tell you today. Now, the wise parent is an utter bore. Listen closely, because you are younger than I am, says the wise parent, and I will go on about Jewish history uh, based on some foggy memory I have of Hebrew school growing up and uh, some article in the Jewish journal I read recently. <laughs> The wise parent must be faced with a small smile of dim interest. Exactly like that. 
The wicked parent tries to cram the story of our liberation into a set of narrow opinions about the world. The Lord led us out of Egypt, the wicked parent says, which is why I support this policy or this person or this theory over here. The wicked parent should be told in a firm voice, with a strong hand, God rescued the Jews from bondage, but it was my own clumsy hand that spilled the hot soup in your lap. The simple parent does not grasp the concept of freedom. There will be no macaroons until you finish your dinner, says the simple parent at, at a dinner honoring the liberation of oppressed people. Also, stop slouching at the table. In answer to such statements, the wise child will roll his eyes in the direction of the ceiling and say, The parent who is unable to inquire has had too much wine and should be excused from the table. Look, That's looks right. great. Looks like we need a refill. Happy Passover, everyone. Happy Passover, everyone. The telling of the story of Passover continues. While the Jews endured harsh slavery in Egypt, God chose Moses to lead them out to freedom. Moses encountered God at the burning bush and then returned to Egypt to lead the people out of Egypt. He demanded that Pharaoh let the Jewish people go, but Pharaoh hardened his heart and refused to let the Jewish people go. That is why God sent the 10 plagues. It is a tradition to remove 10 drops of wine from our cups as we recite the 10 plagues as a remembrance that while the Jews were redeemed through these plagues, people did suffer. Remove a drop of wine for each plague as you recite its name. Blood, frogs, gnats, flies, moraine, boils, hail, locust, darkness, slaying of the firstborn. Dom. Sephardea, Kinim, Arof, Deber, Shin, Barad, Arbe, Choshech, Machat Bechorot, Coronavirus. <laughs> Following the slaying of the firstborn, Pharaoh allowed the Jewish people to leave. The Jews left Egypt in such haste that the dough did not rise, so they ate matzah. When Pharaoh changed his mind and chased after the Israelites, God miraculously caused the Red Sea to split, allowing the Israelites to cross safely. When the Egyptians entered the sea, it returned to its natural state and the mighty Egyptian army drowned. As we conclude telling the story of Passover, we sing a song listing all the wonderful acts God performed for the Israelites when they left Egypt. Dayenu, it would have been enough. If God would have taken us out of Egypt and not executed judgment upon them, it would have been enough for us. Dayenu, if he would have split the sea for us and not let us through it on dry land, it would have been enough for us. Dayenu. If he would have drowned our enemies in it and not provided for our needs in the desert for 40 years, it would have been enough for us. Dainu. Again, such as, this is such a joyous part of the night. We've included many from our community in our celebration that you can sing along with. Happy Pesach, everyone. Um, it's nice to see you. This is Cantor Dara Rosenblatt from Temple Bethel. Um, currently in my home. I hope you're all hanging in there um, and celebrating um, either with close family virtually um, or in your own homes. Um, so we're going to sing together one of the greatest hits of Pesach, Dayenu. It would have been enough. Dayenu, 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 Die, 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 Ilu natan natan lanu natan lanu et hashabbat natan lanu et hashabbat die anew die die anew die die anew die die anew die anew die anew die anew die die anew 
die, die, new, die, die, new, die, new, die, new. Ilu natan natan lanu natan lanu et atora natan lanu et atora die new, die, die, new, die, die, new, die, die, new, die, new, die, new, die, new, die, die, new, die, die, new. Die, die, new, die, new, die, new. And one of my favorite things to do with that melody, since it's one of the Seder's greatest hits, um, I like to use it for the first part of Hallel, which we have before our festive meal. Um, and so I'm going to demonstrate what that sounds like. Um, I'll use it for Psalm 113, just for the beginning, so you have an idea of what that sounds like. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah, day Adonai, hallelujah, Shem Adonai, ye ye Shem Adonai, mirach me atave Adolam. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. And the ending, Moshivia kert habayit, em habanim semecha. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. And there you have it, one of the greatest melodies for Pesach, Dayenu, um, inserted in other places at the Seder. I'm wishing you all a joyous and safe and healthy Pesach um, and hope to see you all soon. Happy Passover from the Hubby family. and welcome to my Seder table. I uh, wanted to explain this uh, part of the Seder. Uh, at the conclusion of the Magid, it says uh, that uh, Rabban Gamliel used to say, anyone who has not explained the significance of three things during the Pesach Seder 
has not yet fulfilled his or her duty. And these are the Pesach lamb, the matzah, and the maror. So these three items are what the Torah specifically commands us uh, about and, and, and what the Torah says, that first Seder right before they left Egypt, what that meal consisted of. It was the Pesach lamb, bitter herbs, and unleavened bread. And so Rabban Gamliel says, well, because these are three Torah commandments found in the Torah at that first Seder, we have to talk about them at our Seder. And if we haven't, we haven't fulfilled our obligation. So we continue with these three elements. Why the Pesach lamb? Why this bone, the Zeroah at our Seder table? Well, it's because God protected our houses and the angel of death passed over our homes because we painted lamb's blood on the doorposts of our house as a symbol that the angel of death would not afflict these homes. So that's the, uh, the, the lamb bone, the shank bone that appears on our Seder table. I'm lifting it up, although at Seder we do not lift it up. We just point to it uh, because it was lifted up in the temple. We do not sacrifice today because we have no temple. And so all we do is we point to it. And then why this matzah? Why this matzah? Because the matzah is the bread of freedom. That uh, our ancestors didn't have time to let their bread rise as they were uh, uh, hurrying out in the middle of the night. They could not delay and they had to take their unleavened bread with them. It's the bread of freedom, that the bread with which uh, they went uh, out of Egypt. And why this maror? This, the bitter herbs, it's to remind ourselves that the Egyptians embittered our lives there. And uh, our lives were embittered, and so we eat this bitter herb. Now, you might be wondering why I'm holding a piece of romaine lettuce. Um, uh, in the rabbinic tradition, uh, back in the Mishnah, they list a series of, uh, of plants, uh, leafy plants that one uh, can fulfill their obligation uh, to eat bitter herbs. And one of those is romaine lettuce, and all of them are actually leafy. Um, at my home, we use arugula. Um, that, that's actually a very bitter, uh, bitter leaf. Uh, romaine lettuce also has that flavor to it, that touch of bitterness. Um, many of you might be using horseradish. Uh, the horseradish, there was a debate over that for, for many hundreds of years because um, in uh, northern and eastern Europe, they did not have leafy vegetables at the ready. Uh, they had roots, beetroots, uh, which is why, uh, and, and, and horseradish roots and potatoes and things like that, which is why those are common uh, Seder items of Ashkenazi Jews coming from, from, those, uh, from, from those communities. Um, uh, and so horseradish took on the bitter herb, but horseradish is more hot than bitter. Um, and so uh, the, what the, the traditions is to use either uh, arugula or romaine lettuce or horseradish, whichever you prefer, but to all those fulfill their obligation for maror. So Pesach, matzah, and maror. And... Rabban Gamliel concludes with what is my favorite line in the entire Haggadah. In every generation, a person is obligated to see him or herself as if he or she personally went out of Egypt. And so we experience these things and we do these things not because we are just telling a story, but also we are reenacting. We are part of it. Uh, so I wish you a Chag Sameach, uh, a wonderful Seder this year, and um, happy Passover. We now conclude the Magid section of the Seder. Tradition teaches us that in every generation we ought to look upon ourselves as if we personally had gone out of Egypt. Therefore, it is our duty to thank the one who performed all the miracles for generations past and present. Some families also say Psalms praising God for taking us out of Egypt. It is now time for the meal. And before we eat, we must say our blessings over the wine and the matzah. A blessing is said over the second cup of wine. Blessed are you, Lord our God, King of the universe, who creates the fruit of the vine. Baruch atah Adonai, leheinu melech haolam, borei pri hagafein. We drink the second cup of wine. At this time, many families also do a second ritual hand washing. The motzi blessing is recited at the beginning of the Seder meal. 
Tonight, of course, we use matzah only. Blessed are you, Lord our God, King of the universe, who brings bread from the earth. Baruch atah Adonai, lehenu melech haolam, amotzi lechem min haaretz. Baruch. Baruch. Ata. Ata. Adonai. Adonai. Eloheinu. Eloheinu. Melech. Melech. Haolam. Haolam. Haamotzi. Haamotzi. Lechem. 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 Min ha aret. Min ha aret. Good job. Now here's the next one. A specific blessing for matzah only said on Seder night is now said. Baruch. Baruch. Ata. Ata. Adonai. Adonai. Eloheinu. Eloheinu. Melech. Melech. Haolam. Asher. Asher. Kiddishanu. Kiddishanu. B'mitzvotav. B'mitzvotav. Al Achilat. Apuba. What do you say? Matzah. Matzah. Okay, you can eat. <laughs> A blessing is said over maror, bitter herbs, usually red wine or white, usually red or white horseradish. Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech Olam Asher Kedushanu B'mitzvotav Vitzivanu Al Achilot Maror. The maror is now eaten. We now make and eat the traditional matzah and haroset sandwich. Each person makes a sandwich using two pieces of matzah with maror and haroset, a mixture of nuts, fruit, wine, and spices that symbolizes the mortar used by the Jewish people to make bricks while enslaved in Egypt. This is done in commemoration of an enactment made by the great sage Hillel, who lived in the time of the Second Temple, to eat Passover sacrifice together with the matzah and maror in a sandwich. Passover dinner is now served. We continue with very important elements of the Seder after the meal. The afikomen, the piece of matzah put aside earlier as the afikomen, is eaten as a dessert. It is traditional in many homes to hide the afikomen for children to find before eating it or for the children to steal the afikomen and hold it ransom. Children who participate should be rewarded and praised at this point. The cup of wine is refilled and birkat hamazon, grace after the meal, is recited. After everyone's favorite part of the Seder, which is eating the meal, we continue with Birkat Hamazon, or the grace after meals. This is a tradition that comes from the Torah, from the book of Deuteronomy, where the Torah says, you shall eat and be satisfied, and then bless or thank God for all the blessings in our lives, which include the food we have, the land, and so many other things. So today we're going to sing an abbreviated version of Birkat Hamazon to keep our Seder nice and short. We'll just do the first paragraph that's done for Shabbat and holidays like Passover, and then the first main paragraph, which is thanking God for food. Shir HaMalot Beshuv Adonai Et Shivat Zion Hayinu Kechomim Az Yemal Eschok Pinu Ul Shoneinu Rina Az yom ruva goyim, higdil Adonai la soti mele, higdil Adonai la soti manu, hainu semechim. Shuv Adonai et shivitenu, kafikim banegev, Hazorim bedima berina yiktoru Haloch yelechu vacho Nase meshech hazara Bo yavo yavo berina Nase alumotav Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam. Hazan et haolam kulo betuvo, bechein bechesed uvrachamim. Hu noten lechem lechobasar, 
ki le olam chasdo uf tu va hagato tamid lo chasalanu be al yachsalanu ma zon le olam vaed ba avushim o hagado ki hu el zanu far nisla kol. U me tiv la kol u me chin ma zon le chobri o tava sher bara baruch atadonai hazan et hakol. A blessing over the third cup of wine is recited. Blessed are you, Lord our God, King of the Universe, who creates the fruit of the vine. Baruch atadonai lehenu melech alam. We drink the third cup of wine. The fourth and final cup of wine is now filled, but we don't drink it yet. An additional cup is then filled and set aside for the prophet Elijah, Eliyahu. Tradition says that Elijah, who will precede the arrival of the Messiah, makes an appearance at every Seder. We traditionally open a door to the home to allow Elijah and enter and sing the song Eliyahu Hanavi. All right, so now what we do is we take some grape juice and we put it our cup. And this is the cup for Elijah. Okay? What is it? The cup of Elijah? Well, at the Seder, we pour a cup for Elijah. That's the charosa, thank you. At the Seder, we pour a cup for Elijah, and we wait for Elijah to come. Because Elijah... What is it? Who's Elijah? Elijah is a very special guy. He's a very special man. And at every Seder, we hope that he comes and visits because when Elijah comes to visit, he is going to say wonderful things like the world is going to be a great place and, 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 and he's going to fix the world and he's going to say that all the things that we need to do to make this world a better place, we can do. Thank you. So... We leave this cup for Elijah, and then what we do is we go over to the door, and we wait, wait, open the door, wait, and we... Wait, wait, to the back door? We can check the front door and the back door. You know, let, let's go check and see, wait for Elijah. We're going to leave this cup for him, and we're going to go check, and let's go see if Elijah comes. He doesn't come through the garage. Let's go to the front door. Because the garage door is locked, so we can't get through the garage door. Elijah, can you call for him? No? Okay. Well, we open the door for Elijah. And you know what? Maybe he'll come through the back door, okay? Well, can we go check? We'll go check. Let's go check the back door. Just in case Elijah comes and visits us tonight and says the world is going to be a better place. Okay? We welcome Eliyahu, the prophet Elijah, into our homes. Eliyahu Hanavi, Eliyahu Adeshvi, Eliyahu Hanavi, Eliyahu Amen. 
Parts call and response, so repeat after me. So we will not wait a minute more. So we will not wait a minute more. To build the world we're waiting for. Build the world we're waiting for. Building starts with you and me. Building starts with you and me. In Eliyahu. The fourth cup of wine is drunk. We conclude the official part of the Seder with a final prayer asking God to bring the Messianic era, when all of us will be gathered to Jerusalem as, a human, as humankind dwells in peace. We have finished the Passover Seder according to his precepts and customs, and we add as a hope for Israel next year in Jerusalem, the Shana Haba'ah Berushalayim. Next year, may we all dwell in peace and be able to once again join together with extended family and friends. It is also traditional to conclude the Seder with fun songs geared toward the younger members. <laughs> One little kid, just one kid, that my father bought for two zoos in Chad Gadia, Chad Gadia. Then came a cat that ate the kid that my father bought for two zoos in Chad Gadia, Chad Gadia. Then came a dog that bit the cat that ate the kid that my father bought for two zoos in Chad Gadia, Chad Gadia. Then came a stick that hit the dog that bit the cat that ate the kid that my father bought for two zoos in Chad Gadia, Chad Gadia. Then came a fire that burned the stick, that hit the dog, that bit the cat, that ate the kid, that my father bought for two zoos in Chad Gadia, Chad Gadia. Then came the water which quenched the fire that burned the stick, that hit the dog, that bit the cat, that ate the kid, that my father bought for two zoos in Chad Gadia, Chad Gadia. Then came the ox that drank the water which quenched the fire that burned the stick, that hit the dog that bit the cat that ate the kid, that my father bought for two zoos in Chad Gadia, Chad Gadia. Then came the butcher who slaughtered the ox that drank the water which quenched the fire that burned the stick, that hit the dog that bit the cat that ate the kid, that my father bought for two zoos in Chad Gadia, Chad Gadia. Then came the angel of death who killed the butcher who slaughtered the ox that drank the water which quenched the fire that burned the stick that hit the dog that bit the cat that ate the kid that my father bought for two zoos in Chad Gadia, Chad Gadia. And for this verse, 
I'd like to invite my father, Rabbi Beck Berman, to join me. Then came the Holy One and smote the angel of death. <laughs> who killed the butcher. <clears throat> who slaughtered the ox. <sighs> that drank the water. Which quenched the fire. That burned the stick. That hit the dog. That bit the cat. Meow. That ate the kid. Meh. That my father bought for two zuzim chad gad Shalom, good evening, hello. My name is Daniel Stavenberg and I'm the CEO of the Jewish Community Federation of Richmond. The Jewish Federation has been serving our Richmond community for 85 years, and I'm really honored to lead the organization at this moment in time as together we support those affected by the coronavirus. I wanna thank you all so much for watching tonight and to all those who participated in making this showcase of my favorite Jewish holiday special. We can't thank you all enough for sharing your family traditions, wisdom, and fun with us. Thank you as well to our wonderful friends at VPM for their partnership in bringing this program to you and the outstanding programming that they share with us every day. As you saw, Passover is a holiday filled with family and friends. This year, while our physical selves can't be together, I wanna to encourage everybody to reach out and stay connected. Check in on loved ones, make that video call, that FaceTime call, pick up the phone. It's important and we need to make sure that we're checking in and supporting each other. Passover is a communal holiday meant to be celebrated in groups. And while that isn't the case this year, we know that only together, thinking about each other, staying a safe distance and working together will result in us being together next year and defeating the plague of coronavirus. And promise, I promise you that day will come. Passover reminds us that even in our triumph, we are to think about those who suffer and struggle. Today, we do so by sending our love and thoughts to those currently stricken with coronavirus, struggling for health, and the family and friends of those who have been taken by this horrible plague. We send our thoughts and prayers that the memories of those lost provide their families comfort, and we pray that all those afflicted quickly return to health. Finally, Passover is about heroes and leaders, unafraid to do what is needed on behalf of a people. I've been blessed to see so much good in our community over the last few weeks, and I know I join you in thanking the doctors, nurses, counselors, home health aides, and health professionals across the country who are on the front lines. Your service is truly inspiring. On behalf of the Jewish Federation, our family of agencies and synagogues, I wish you all a Zissen Pesach, and thank you for being with us today. Thank you so much for joining us. We hope you enjoy all of the various different uh, chapters that our uh, friends in the Jewish community have, have kind of uh, mocked up for you and filmed. Uh, if you have any questions, you can find me on Twitter at Robin Farzad. Send me a direct message. Uh, we will get past this and we'll get together and break bread or matzah or whatever it is on the other end of it. Uh, for both VPM and the Jewish community, I'm Robin Farzad. Thank you so much.